so we are going on to the next chapter so today we are going to discuss about the analysis and design which is required for <coughs> designing of machine foundation and we are going to I mean focus mainly on two types of uh, machine foundation uh, especially for reciprocating and impact type of machines so we are going to see what are the differences so thing is that we are uh, for a moment we are shifting uh, from the earthquake vibrations earthquake induced seismic motions to manual i mean uh, i mean operation uh, i mean induced uh, vibratory motions all right so that is what we are doing so thing is that when there is a machine so we have a machine so as we have seen so on top of a foundation so the machine has certain weight all right so mass if we say so it will have a weight w and the foundation itself will have a weight so w suppose foundation if we say so wm this is the machine so we will have a static load so that is what is the weight of the machine along with the weight of the foundation so that is the static load just put on there so due to the gravity now apart from that when the machine will be operated there will be vibration in the machine there will be vibration in the machine so there will be various moving parts in the machine and that will induce a dynamic load onto the foundation Right, or onto the soil through the foundation that is okay so for a machine foundation we definitely have the static loads apart from that we have the dynamic loads as well so dynamic loads generally they are a little bit on the lower side than compared to the static loads which we will be applied generally the mass of the foundation is significantly high when there is a machine foundation being constructed we will see why it is so as we go on in our with our discussion the thing is that so we have the mass of the machine and the foundation so that gives a static load and then when the machine is operated so it will vibrate up down or this way that way whatever way all right the various motions we will see that so that will impart the dynamic load onto the foundation so the thing is that when this kind of foundation is constructed when we construct this kind of foundation so it has to be such that the soil behavior the soil behavior it has to be within the elastic range so soil as we know is elastoplastic so it after a certain time there is plastic deformation so very within a very small range it has to be within that let's right? so it has to be in elastic range not there should not be any plastic deformation or what will happen is that that plastic deformation over the numbers of cycle it will accumulate all right and and as we have seen so it will accumulate with numbers of cycle in this manner and there will be a significant amount of settlement in the foundation and the foundation will be rendered i mean we cannot use that foundation anymore all right apart from that the amplitude of the motion has to be within the permissible limits we have seen that right so amplitude of the motion during the operation all right should be within the permissible limits so that is one case we will see why it is so and obviously the natural frequency as well now this is an important case we will see what may happen when the natural frequency of the system i mean uh, what may happen when there is uh, i mean resonance okay so resonance we have to avoid so we have to take care of this natural frequency of the foundation system
So reciprocating machines Okay, so we have uh, generally three types of machine one is the reciprocating machine so uh, I mean various types of compressors then uh, uh, engines all right so thing is that there is an engine here so there are some I mean moving parts so you can see this anvils they move up and down when there is compression here so there is one motion in this direction all right so then there is another motion in this direction then there may be rotation in this direction all right so there are various motions which may be associated with okay so that is a reciprocating machine reciprocating machines are generally where the uh, loading conditions they are fairly i mean harmonic okay they are fairly harmonic so we will see that so first type of machine is the reciprocating machine so we have this piston rod here the outlet the inlet and this is the piston so there is this motion all right and then there is the crankshaft so it is rotating in this manner the other one will be rotating in the other direction all right so there is significant amount of motion so all of that will be all of that motion will be transferred to the foundation so reciprocating machines we can approximate to the one that we have already discussed when we uh, discussed the block uh, vibration test so in that case we considered one sinusoidally varying force to be applied on the foundation so we can approximate the motion of reciprocating machine to that kind of i mean uh, vibratory motion all right and it is uh, mostly the rotation they are i mean uh, limited to 50 to 250 rotations per minute okay and may also go up to 600 rotations per minute also so basically there is a range of rotations so uh, 600 up to 600 rotations per minute also so diesel diesel engines all right so they may go up to that so the unbalanced force forces in this type of machines they may consider to be very sinusoidal all right or we can say to be harmonic we can say to be harmonic so we have this machine over here all right so this is the motion here this is the rotatory rotating motion here all right then there is uh, i mean rotation of in this manner here all right so there are various motions so then so this is the reciprocating machines all right then we have the impact type of machine so impact type of machine is basically a huge machine all right and actually uh, thing is that they induce significant amount of forces onto the foundation so thing is that so here this hammer is maybe lifted up and suddenly it will hit back and then it will be again lifted up and then it will hit again all right so impact type of machine that is called what is the impact type of machine. so it produces impact loads all right, like forging hammers punching press all right then uh, stamping machines all right so these are the impact hammers now their frequency of operation is very low they generally range from suppose 60 to 150 rotations per minute but thing is that the dynamic force it is significantly large of, of large magnitude and it attains a peak value then it dies out then again suddenly there is an impact then it dies out all right then ap apart from that so here we have an anvil machine here so we have the block foundation so this is the foundation here so we have a shock absorbing material here all right and then we have the anvil so on top of this whatever has to be i mean hammered is kept and it is hammered down all right so in that manner the impact type of machines operate so we will see there are different ways of analyzing all of those
then we have the rotary machines so yeah so this is the anvil so we have this elastic pad here we can see this elastic pad so this is a shock shock absorbing material here this is the foundation block so then we have that means two two i mean uh, system to consider one is the soil one is the soil and one is this elastic pad so this is one system and the soil is the other system okay so we have this two i mean freedom of uh, degree i mean uh, two i mean oscillating mass all right and two degrees of freedom all right here so this is the anvil this is the anvil and this is the hammer here and tube here and it just drops down and whatever thing is there all right so it has to be hammered there then apart from that there is the rotary machine so those are actually the compressors and the turbines so they they i mean they run very at a very high frequency so that is uh, approximately i mean 3000 to 10000 rotations per minute so that is another type of uh, rotary machines that uh, i mean uh, there are three types all right of machines so first of all is the rotary reciprocating machines and the impact second type is the impact machines so in our uh, discussion over here in this particular uh, subject topic so we are going to confine ourselves with the reciprocating machines and the impact type of machines okay so reciprocating machines they are generally of this sort so we can approximate the behavior to be of sinusoidal nature all right so we can approximate the behavior to be of sinusoidal nature so this is the dynamic load of the reciprocating machine whereas when there is impact type of machine so suddenly there is huge amount of load and then there it i mean it is stopped all right so and then the soil is i mean the i mean the vibration in the soil it is transferred all right and the soil it vibrates for some while and then the, it dies out all right so the i mean the damp dampening effect of the soil it comes into play and then it stops then suddenly maybe again there is a hammer all right and then it dies out okay so again there is a hammer and there it dies out so in that manner the impact machines operate all right so we have so we will discuss in our uh, subject here we will discuss about designing of foundation system actually we will design i mean discuss more about the analysis and what are the things to consider in the design of foundation system for these two types of machine one is a reciprocating machines and one is the impact type of machines okay now we have to consider the criteria for satisfactory function of a machine foundation so thing is that first of all there is the static loads so this is the mass of the foundation and the so wf weight of the foundation and wm weight of the machine generally the weight of the machine is much lower smaller i mean smaller than the weight of the foundation okay the weight of the foundation is has a very large it is very large all right and the dynamic force is also compared to the weight of the foundation it is less so first of all we have to consider for the static loads so definitely this entire system it is exerting a pressure onto the soil it is exerting a pressure onto the soil so first of all it has to fulfill the shear failure criteria so we know the bearing capacity of the soil all right q is equal to c and c plus q uh and q all right q minus 1 and q all right plus half gamma b and gamma 
and we have the various factors so shape, shape factors is there s c s q and s uh, gamma all right so shape factors are there then the depth factors are there then the water table correction factors are there then there are inclination factors all right so all those factors are there so first of the thing is that for the static loads there should be no shear failure so the bearing capacity should be sufficient enough to support the foundation as well as the machine on it so first of all that then obviously the settlement criteria from the static load cases okay so we have the consolidation settlement so we have the consolidation settlement then the elastics settlement as well then the elastic settlement as well so all of those criteria should be fulfilled whatever criteria has to be fulfilled for a static clothes it has to be fulfilled for the machine foundation as well now apart from that apart from the static loads now we have the dynamics loads all right and the response that we will get from the machine and the foundation and the soil okay so we have to consider that so the machine will vibrate so there is a vibrating frequency omega of the machine and there will be a foundation i mean the vibration of the foundation and the soil so that will be omega n that will be the natural frequency of the system okay so first of all omega n should not be equal to omega that is there should be no resonance obviously we know when there is resonance the amplitude exceeds all values and there is a total crash of the system we have already discussed that anyway we will again discuss so that is the first condition so no resonance so natural frequency of the system should be totally different from the operating system uh, frequency of the machine so that is there should be no resonance then the permissible amplitude all right so the amplitude has to be within the permissible limit so it should not exceed that limit whatever is given so the operator or the i mean manufacturer of the machine so the manufacturer of the machine they will give certain i mean amplitude of operation for the machine all right so if there is uh, too much vibration and amplitude in the uh, this machine what will happen is that all the fixtures all right or the nuts and the bolts all the fix i mean the the uh, fixing uh, i mean the systems they will fall apart all right so that that has to be kept in mind so the manufacturer will say that this machine it can, it should not be operated beyond this particular amplitude so it has to be kept be, uh, within that apart from that it should not cause annoyance all right to the persons we are who are operating there so obviously when you are going through a smooth road all right through a smooth road you are in a car all right you are in a car like this and you are going through a smooth road so you feel nice very nice all right so you enjoy the breeze all right and the view and other things all right and now if that road is full of potholes all right or unnecessary i mean uh, this uh, speed breakers all right so it becomes an annoyance so similarly suppose you are operating i mean working somewhere okay and suddenly a machine starts and the decks and the chair where you are sitting and it you, it starts jumping up all right it starts vibrating all right so suppose you are writing a note so it will all go somewhere somewhere all right so that should not be there all right and apart from that obviously there will be some precision instruments so there will be pressure gauge all right so there will be pressure gauge then dial gauges will be there to measure the uh, displacement all right so all of that pressure I mean, precision instruments then there will be uh, i mean 
uh, I mean some meters on it so to measure the maybe electric current or I mean the resistance or whatever so those precision instruments they should not be affected from the vibrations of the machines so that is what we have to consider while taking into consideration this dynamic loads and the response from that okay so Ricard 1962 he gave the amplitude and the frequency and what happens all right so if the amplitude is it is in inch okay it is in inch he gave so if the amplitude is so this is uh, both is in log scale so this is also in log scale this is also also in log scale so this is frequency cycles per minute right so this is frequency cycles per minute and this is the amplitude so if the amplitude is within 0.001 inch all right and it is frequency is less than 1000 cycles per minute okay it is not noticeable to persons okay it is not not noticeable now this is applicable only to machine foundations okay this is applicable only to machine foundations now in case of earthquake it is uh, of low frequency it is i mean uh, generally of low frequency still when there is an earthquake significant amount of energy is released all right and the acceleration is significantly high and you can feel the jerking and the vibration in the structures all right the structures are vibrated so you can feel that okay so uh, this is what Ricard in 1962 gave so so we can see not noticeable to persons and ultimately we have a limit so this is the limit for the machines and this is the limit for the foundation machine foundations over here so this is the limit okay so amplitude and frequency has to be within this persons in fact it should be if if possible it should be somewhere here all right so we can notice easily noticeable the persons so barely noticeable easily noticeable if if it goes beyond this so it is troublesome to persons all right so it i mean it creates annoyance so that that is also to be i mean kept in mind while considering the dynamic forces or uh, this dynamic loads and the response while designing the machine foundation okay so now when we discuss about machine foundation so we have discussed about the uh, this this uh, criteria so there should be no resonance the natural frequency of the system basically all right so natural frequency of the system and the operating frequency of the machine all right they should be they should not coincide in fact zone of resonance is generally defined all right so zone of resonance for this machine is generally defined and uh, the natural frequency so the block block foundation so the block foundation has to be so designed that it is outside this zone of operating frequencies all right it must lie outside this zone so that is the first criteria all right and then we have already discussed that the amplitude of motion it should be within the permissible limit and it is generally specified by the machine manufacturers all right and uh, it should be within the tolerable limits that is the thing but again while designing it we have to keep in mind that it does not fall into this okay so while changing the vibration again so that we can con control the amplitude we should not i mean we should make sure that it, there is no resonance again all right and of course 
the vibration should not be annoying to the persons and definitely it should not be I mean uh, harmful to the persons as well as the precision instruments mostly all right so for methods of analysis so again for, uh, as we have one when we discussed regarding the block foundation uh, this uh, block vibration test we I mean discuss that we approximate the soil we approximate the soil to behave in a certain way all right approximate the soil to behave in a certain way okay so the first method of analysis it is based on linear weightless spring so what it is done is that in this case the soil it is assumed to be cons consisting of springs okay so the soil it is assumed to be consisting of springs so definitely the foundation is laid on soil all right but when we do the analysis when we do the analysis we assume that soil here is analogous to springs that is weightless springs okay it is analogous to the weightless springs and obviously you can also consider one dashboard system here okay attached to the mass here so we can consider one dashboard system so this is a dashboard so the coefficient of I mean uh, I mean damping here a little dashboard coefficient C so we can add that but thing is that as we have discussed uh, if you remember of course we are going to discuss that again if you remember while we had we were, we were discussing regarding the block vibration tests and uh, regarding the vibration in the soil and the forced vibration so the in the soil what happens is that the vibration is generally it will die out after certain numbers of cycle so this is the natural I mean, vibration of the soil so if it is considered the damping core this one so again what will happen is that this force vibration it will continue okay but when we analyze so the main emphasis of the analysis is the resonance okay so we can approximate that as a only consisting of a weightless spring we can neglect all right and uh, it actually uh, uh, actually what happens is that when uh, there is I mean uh, the natural frequency is not very close to the operating frequency of the system uh, I mean it is far away from the resonant I mean uh, this frequencies so thing is that uh, the damping it has very low effect on the amplitude of the motion so generally we can uh, consider that there is no damping at all at, at that variations of the frequency all right the frequency of the natural system and the frequency of the operating system that is the machine so anyway thing is that so the first uh, method of analysis is it is based on linear weightless spring so we assume the soil it is made up of some weightless springs and uh, we have we define the stiffness of the spring and we correlate that to the stiffness of the soil we will see how we do that okay we correlate that to the properties of the soil basically the cu all right the coefficient of uniform compression that we have already learned so that is how we correlate so this is the first method of analysis all right then in the second method which is actually more relevant 
all right and more rational thing is that so it, it is almost like uh, taking the soil well, i mean actual in the actual case whatever it is like this so we take the elastic half space okay so what we consider is that so the soil it has a plane surface and it extends to infinity all right infinite distance in downward and x and y directions all right but in the upward z direction it is limited by this plane over here all right so that is the elastic half space half that is why all right the upper half is not there so the lower half is taken so that is why elastic half space all right now thing is that the analysis considering elastic half space it is uh, somewhat complicated than uh, considering as the based on i mean a spring system so if we consider uh, the elastic half space so the solutions becomes a little bit complicated but it is actually more rational it is all i mean uh, it is more rational i mean and, and more related to the actual in situ conditions and if time permits and if time permits we will definitely we are going to discuss regarding this because uh, this is an important concept and if if there is time at the end of the uh, this discussion so we will definitely look into this but for now we are going to concentrate on this system of or this method of analysis okay so based on the linear weightless springs so now before going into the analysis so first of all we have to define the degrees of freedom so if we have a block if we have a block in how many ways it can move okay in how many ways it can move so that is the degrees of freedom so obviously when there is a block it can go up and down so that is the first motion okay vertical motion okay so that is the we can say so we have the block and it moves in the vertical direction so we have this first degree of freedom of motion so that is translation so that is translation so translation along z axis so that is the first degree of motion then obviously similarly it can go forward and backward in the y axis if we consider all right and similarly it can go forward and backward in the x axis direction okay so it can come forward and it can come go backward in the x axis so translation along x axis and similarly translation along the y axis so translational motion okay that is the translational motion so 3 3 degree of 3 degrees of freedom already we have discussed now apart from that so if we consider this z axis so the body or the formation it can rotate in this manner okay so it can rotate in this manner or this manner so that is the rotation about the z axis okay 
so that is another degree of another degree of freedom so then similarly it can rotate about the x axis it can rotate in this manner all right so it will rotate in this manner okay so that is the rotation about the x axis okay rotation about the x axis so this is x axis it is rotating about the x axis so rotation about the x axis similarly this is the rotation about y axis okay so translational motion along z axis is defined as up and down then translational motion about the x axis is find forward and backward translational motion about the y axis is defined left and right left and right okay then so rotation about the x axis rotation about the x axis is defined as the roll okay it is defined as the roll so this is the roll and rotation about the y axis is defined the pitch and obviously the rotation about the z axis it is defined the yaw okay now when we consider a block when we consider a block so we have to understand which motions are independent of each other and which motions are dependent on each other okay so here the motion about the z axis so either up and down and rotation about the z axis that is the yaw all right it is independent so we have root i mean uh, motion about the z axis translational motion of the z axis and the rotational motion about the z axis so it is independent there is there is two modes of motion okay now thing is that when there is motion about the x and y axis either it is rotating or it is moving backward and forward or left and right all right or it is pitching and rolling all right thing is that it will affect the two all right so it will this two motions it is not independent so if there is rolling so there will be compression in this one extension in this side again when there will be in this rotation so there will be extension in this side compression in this side all right so similarly when there is a backward and forward so there will be shear in this motion all right so all of these are related okay so we can now say that two motions are independent so one is the translation about the z axis one is the rotation about the z axis and the other two motions other four motions are actually coupled all right and then we can define two modes of movement okay we will see what are the two modes of the movement okay so this these two motions are coupled and we can define two modes of motion for this four degrees of freedom okay two modes of motion so we can define and we can analyze that right in that in that manner <clears throat> so first one if we consider again as we have discussed here 
is the motion along the z axis right so that is the first mode of vibration uniform compression what we see so basically the mass will move up and down so that is the first mode of vibration so we have to determine what is the natural frequency of this system of this foundation and i mean the machine together all right so the, that is the natural frequency of the system that is what we are telling all right so we have to determine what is the natural frequency of the system for this mode of vibration that is uniform compression okay so that is we define as suppose omega n along z axis okay translational along z axis tz okay we can write tz so translational along z axis so we have to determine what is the natural frequency so again we come up to that so we have a mass which is oscillating in this fashion so it is up and down it is oscillating and we have the motion of i mean the equation of the motion here and ultimately we can de define the frequency of this system of this system as i mean natural frequency omega n is equal to root over k by m okay so if the spring constant is kz so root over kz by m okay so similarly here also so we have this mass rotating and we have this projection here which is making a motion of uniform circular motion all right so this is the projection of this mass which is oscillating so simple humming motion it is undergoing and the projection is undergoing uniform circular motion all right and we have this time versus y y versus t curve sinusoidal curve so this is the first mode of vibration uniform compression that is what we call okay then now here either the i mean this block is moving in this direction left right or forward backward okay ultimately it is same it is i mean the mass is same all right and the stiffness of the soil is also same so ultimately we can define these two mode to be same all right so this is the one mode that is shear shearing mode okay this was the vertical up and down motion and this is the shearing this is the compressional motion and this is the shearing motion this both of these are two shearing motion so that we define as the other mode that is uniform shear okay so the uh, box or the block will undergo a motion in this and this direction all right so the block is here and either it will go in this direction or it will move in this direction ultimately the both of them can be clubbed into the same type of motion that is the shear motion it is shearing the soil on top of the soil all right so ultimately it can be i mean compared to be analogous to this system over here so we have the spring mass over here spring and the mass okay and then we again define the natural frequency now in case here again it is translational only so omega n so it is translational so either x or y okay so that is the omega n translational x or y so we have to define that so then again if you note here so we have the pitching and we have the rocking or rolling 
all right so we have this motion so ultimately both of the motion is again same okay so they can be analyzed in a similar fashion so what we consider is we consider that to be non uniform compression so if the block it moves so it is rotating about this point okay so it is i mean rocking about this point so at one i mean uh, cycle it is going this way in the other cycle it is going this way okay so the axis is undergoing a pendulum kind of motion okay the axis is undergoing a pendulum so this is the axis here so it rotates here and it will rotate in the other other direction as well okay we can delete the top part so this if you see non uniform compression so here you see so the soil it is getting compressed in this part and it is non uniform it is the compression is increasing so it is almost the compression is nil at on this point and the compression is maximum at the edge of the block foundation okay at the edge of the block foundation similarly on the other side it is almost there is extension okay so that is why this mode of vibration is called the non uniform compression so that is the third mode okay then the fourth mode is when it is rotating about this z axis okay so if you see here so if i look from the top if i look from the top so this is the plan okay so and when there will be rotation so you can see if i draw an axis here so the axis will be rotated in this fashion here like this so it will be rotated so you can see so the shearing here is less and the shearing here as we go readily out it is getting more and more okay so that is why non uniform shear okay so this is the yawing motion so in the yawing motion we have the non uniform shear so as we go readily out at the center there is the less amount of shear as we come readily out we have the higher amount of shear so non uniform shear okay so pitching and rocking or rolling we can combine into this motion that is non uniform compression so either the foundation is pitching in this axis x axis okay so there will be compression here extension there okay if it is pitching in this i mean rolling in this y axis okay like this so there will be i mean compression here extension here so in the other i mean when it will change the direction now what will happen is that the compression will now be on the other direction so here it will be compression and there will be extension right so this will change the direction and it will oscillate in between these two right as as this will oscillate in this fashion okay. or vibrate in this fashion so both of them can be i mean uh, the motion is i mean seen so we define four modes of vibration <laughs> one is vertical then the other is shear either in the x direction uh, x direction in this direction or y direction so that is the shear then we have the non uniform compression either in the rotation in the x axis or rotation about the y axis we have the non uniform compression and then we have the non uniform shear for the rotation about the z axis
Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to define the motion, the equation of the motion of this modes, the four modes. Okay, so now uh, we know that if there is an oscillating mass, so we have already discussed. So first of all is the inertial force. So if it is, I mean, there is an acceleration A in this mass in any direction. So first of all is the inertial force. So M into A, that is the inertial force. Okay, then there is the spring force which is acting on this mass. So that is dependent on the displacement k into z. Then if we have, obviously if we have a dashpot system, it will be always opposite to the velocity. So if the velocity is in this direction or that direction, so we will have a force from the dashpot system. So we can also add that up. Ultimately the, I mean, uh, whatever is the, um, direction in that manner it will take up the sign all right so we can add c into velocity p okay so in some books it is represented in this manner mz dot dot so that means double differentiation of z plus c into z dot means single differentiation of z all right plus k into z so if this force is not there so we can define it as equal to zero now since there is a force which is being applied onto the system so we will have that force on this other direction so it will be given by mz plus cz uh, c i mean uh, m into acceleration ma m into acceleration plus c into the velocity plus k into z is equal to p naught sine omega t okay so sine omega t so this is the inertial force this is the damping force, this is the spring force, and this is the exciting force. That is the X, X, I mean, which is causing the motion in the system. Now, definitely, we have considered this to be, I um, mean, negligible, and we have neglected that. So, this will be subtracted out. Okay, so we have mass into acceleration plus k into z equal to p naught sin omega t that is what we have Okay, so for this system, for this system, so we have now, we can now define the natural frequency of the system. So it will be equal to, natural frequency will be equal to root over k by m. Alright, or in this case, in this case we can write omega n. So translation along z axis is equal to root over k by mass, I mean the mass of the system, okay, mass of the system. Now, the coefficient of elastic uniform uh, compression, all right, so of the soil, so coefficient of elastic uniform compression
of the soil it is defined as cu all right and cu is given by the uniform compression okay so uniform compression so uniform compression by the elastic settlement that we have all right so if you remember uh, giving the plate load test uh, we did and also in the block vibration test we did so the uniform compression is defined as the uniform i mean uh, the coefficient of elastic uniform compression is defined as uniform compression by elastic settlement okay elastic settlement and k k here we can define as k is equal to load by the elastic deformation all right or load by the deformation okay so in both case this deformation and this elastic settlement are the same will be same all right and what is the load now what is the load so load is actually the uh, stress in the area okay so the stress in the area so it is if if the load is p so p into uh, a so if if if, if the i mean the uh, load uh, this uh, uh, stress or the i mean the pressure in the uniform this uh, it is distributed in a p over the area uniformly distributed load over the area is p and the area is a then we have p into a the total load that is okay that is the total load and p is the uniformly distributed load over the area that is the stress that is acting on the area okay so now we have k is equal to p into a by elastic settlement and we have cu is equal to uniform compression or uh, that is the uniformly distributed load that is the p uniformly distributed load by the elastic settlement in this case okay so ultimately we can define k is equal to so if i put here so k is equal to cu into a okay so that is what we can define so ultimately we know omega n tz is equal to root over k suppose z in this case by m so that we can define as root over cu a by m where a is the area of the foundation all right and p is the uniformly distributed load all right so i mean uh, that is force per unit area all right that is p okay so that is the force per unit area so in this case p all right so that is force per unit area or load per unit area okay so that is the natural frequency in translational motion similarly similarly we have the uniform shear okay so uniform shear we have so again as we have uh, considered so we can consider a spring attached to the mass here like this all right so we have the acceleration all right so if we consider x here so m into acceleration plus again k into x we can tell here like this k into x again that will be equal to px sine of omega t now omega is the frequency of vibration in this direction in the x direction that is okay so we can write it as plus kx is equal to px sin of omega t okay so we have now the frequency we can define as omega n 
translation in the x direction we have equal to root over k by m all right now similarly here as we had so we had the coefficient of uniform compression cu so here what we can define is we can define the coefficient of uniform shear c tau that we have discussed in during the block partition test of course we will again see look into those uh, parameters again once after the things while designing so we have the coefficient of uniform shear c tau okay so c tau into a will give the kx in this case okay so omega n translation in the x direction or in the y direction you will have is root over c tau a by m okay so that is the natural frequency in the y direction so just as in this case we have the natural frequency of for uniform compression so in this motion so we have this uniform i mean uh, this natural frequency of motion in this direction now we will see why this is very so very important to find out okay so cu coefficient of uniform compression and c tau are two very important parameters to be determined while uh, designing uh, this foundation system for i mean machine machine foundation okay so this is a very important parameter and of course there are other modes of vibration and we will discuss that in the next class okay so we will sum up here today